Today we have with us Dr. Neha Sharma, who's going to tell us about her journey into pharmacovigilance after BDS. After completing her BDS, Dr. Neha Sharma worked as a clinical dentist for four years. Then she made the shift to non-clinical, starting with the position of clinical associate at IKS. After working there for six months, she moved on to pharmacovigilance. She is currently a team lead for the medical review and medical advisor team, which is working on the COVID vaccine project. We have already created a video about the basic details of pharmacovigilance. If you have not seen that video, do go and check it out before or after watching this video. I'll be putting the details of it in the description below. If not pharmacovigilance, you can also check out our videos on clinical research and medical transcription and virtual scribing. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, Dr. Neha. Thank you for taking your time and joining us today to talk about your journey in pharmacovigilance with the young dental graduates. My first question to you is, when you join pharmacovigilance, there are various posts. Which is the most common entry-level post one gets into? Uh, so it depends on the requirement of the project. Uh, at the time of hiring, what is exactly it is that the company is looking for. But the most common entry-level position that you can see is that of for drug safety associate. That's the basic and the starting point for anybody in TV. And if you're lucky enough, you may start off your career in medical advisor or medical reviewer role. But these roles are defined by the client. Like sometimes they come with a certain set of requirements where you, wherein you're required to have a prior experience in pharmacovigilance. So mostly people start off as drug safety associates. Okay. So now when I go for this interview for a drug safety associate, I would have a lot of people around me. Some would be in MBBS graduates, some would be dental graduates, others would be from the pharmacol uh, pharmacology background. Being a dentist, is there any advantage or disadvantage during the interview process? Uh, so firstly, I'll correct you. MBBS graduates don't go for this. Okay. They will directly be going for medical reviewing or medical advisor role. And yes, BDS graduates also go for it, depending. Uh, how easy it is for dentists? Well, again, it completely depends on what is the need for that role. If at that point, how many candidates they have. So based on that, that determines your chances of getting selected. They expect people to have a basic knowledge in TV. So whenever you go for such interviews, make sure that you know you prepare yourself with knowing the basics and you know understanding the basics of pharmacovigilance and having some sound medical knowledge. Okay. So being a dentist as such does not give you any advantage or disadvantage in the process. It gives an advantage when you're going for medical advisor or medical reviewer role, because those roles are uh, very specific in terms of uh, the eligibility. Usually for such roles, they take MBBS uh, or MD position, but in some places, BDS graduates are also eligible for it. And in those cases, you are expected to have a good medical knowledge because these roles do require you to make medical judgments. So if you are not very strong with your medical knowledge, that's going to be a drawback there. Okay. Uh, now, if I'm interested in getting into PV, okay, do you advise I join a course or something of that sort, learn about it, or I can directly apply for these interviews? Yeah. So it's not really uh, essential that you do a course, any short courses. There are short courses available, but it's not essential that you do them before you apply for any such roles because your BDS degree should do the job best. However, uh, you can do these courses if you want to further enhance your uh, pharmacovigilance knowledge. But in most of these companies that you join, initially they give you a basic training in into PV. So you don't have to worry about you know not knowing anything before you join this industry. They will train you for the role that you're in and they will train you sufficiently so that you're able to perform because you have to understand that more than you, the company needs you to perform well. So they will, of course, put in a lot of effort to train you. 
understood. but if you really wanted to if you really want to do a course i would suggest you take up a course after you join so that you know even in pv there are multiple branches of it so once you join you can understand which in which area your interest lies and then take up the course accordingly okay that's good advice so you can either do it before or you can do it when you are getting into the field so that will help you enhance your knowledge further very good advice yes uh the next thing is where can we find such jobs in pharmacovigilance okay before you listen to the answer to that question please do not forget to hit the like button below because the guests here take a lot of time and effort to come and answer your queries so firstly i think it's very important and it is very helpful if you have friends who are already working if you have contacts so networking is very important so if you have people uh, who are seniors or people in juniors or people who you are working with who happen to be in this field it's always an advantage because when somebody who is working in the company uh, refers you for a job or if they are aware of any internal job postings or there is a walk in interview which you may or may not know as an outsider but they may have access to that information first hand so it makes it easier for you to get that kind of information and get an insight of the company culture but if you don't have that there's always uh, linkedin you can always make connections via linkedin and uh, few of these jobs are posted in uh, the employment employment recruitment sites like nokri.com and indeed you can find some of these jobs but if you can't like because not all of these jobs get listed there you can go directly to the company's job portal like each of these companies have a job portal on their website so you can directly go in there check for each and every role not in not in not every role they will specify that they need a bds graduate per se but they may specify that you know any healthcare graduate or anything like that so you have to go and check in your eligibility for those roles and you can directly apply from there as well understood now once i come to know there is a job okay and you told there is no requirement to do a course or such and i apply what are the tricks and tips how that i can do well in my interview so that i get the job okay so i think firstly you need to build a very good and impressive uh, cv i think it's highly underrated people just make a very basic and simple the more presentable and uh, you know it it has to be like done in a very crisp and clear way wherein your best skills are put in first it has to be short but all of your achievements all of your good skills should be there on top and uh, of course you can before you go in you can always uh, uh, read a little bit about you know the basics of pharmacovigilance and like i said because you're a doctor you're expected to have some sound knowledge medical knowledge so it's always good that you go through any of the medical uh, the basic medical diseases that we have the management and the most commonly used drugs like antihypertensives and diabetic drugs and all of those things like the basic ones so they don't they don't go in detail but you need to have an overview of medical knowledge and if suppose you're going like you know you're going specifically for a separate project like if suppose you're going for a covid vaccine project so it's always better that you study about covid and the covid vaccine as a separate uh separate entity so that will help you now what if we get into the job what are the qualities which are required so that we can grow fast in uh, pharmacovigilance and do our job well uh so i think every role has a different set of qualities that are being looked for so first thing in corporate that you need to learn is good communication i think if you are really skillful with your job but you're not really good with communication that really hinders your growth so you need to be good with your verbal as well as non verbal people can go in and learn email writing i think it's a very uh, again it's a very underrated skill to have but email writing is very important and uh, in corporate culture it's very important documentation is considered very important and email writing is like the basis of it so uh, yes first thing is communication second thing is to make your uh, domain knowledge strong whichever like in pharmacovigilance whichever domain it is a domain 
but whatever your role is it is very important to have your concepts clear so it is only on the basis of knowledge and communication that you know you will be able to grow faster understood uh now what are the expected starting salary or range across various companies in pharmacovigilance once we get a job so the salary depends on various factors the most important being your last ctc your last salary that is uh it also depends on the company's budget for that role okay like sometimes it happens that suppose you in your clinic you're making uh say 12 13 lakh a month uh, a year and then if you apply for a role but the company doesn't have that much budget for uh, like of course if you are earning 12 lakhs a year you will obviously expect more than that 12 or more but if the company doesn't have that much budget for that role for which you've applied in they are going to reject you so that's another factor next thing would be your skill set your negotiation skills again it's it's a very important factor and uh, to summarize i would say for a fresher graduate with like no experience at all it can range anywhere between 20 to 35000 a month but the salary is highly variable and again it understood. depends on all of these factors understood uh, now we got into the job okay what is the normal growth trajectory as in based in positions and roles across pharmacovigilance okay i'm really glad you asked that because pharmacovigilance is a very very diverse field i mean there's and it's in general that's how it is in corporate that it, things are really vast so you can start off as an associate but you may end up taking a role eventually maybe in the managerial positions or you could just change your direction and maybe become a medical writer so there are numerous options for you to choose in it it all depends on your area of interest your expertise and the skills that you develop over time okay uh you told about corporate culture and everything see you have worked in a dental fielding prior to joining pharmacovigilance so what are the differences you found between a dental clinic culture and a corporate culture as such okay like just the culture you mean yes so what what difference is how is it different working in a corporate company okay so firstly uh when you work in a clinic you have it's just you your assistant maybe another dentist or two so it's it's very limited people that you're working with but when you're working in a corporate setup there are a lot of people you start working with and and that just starts i think there's so much personality development that happens over there because you're interacting you're meeting with so many different people who come with so much of different experiences and they shape you they shape you in in ways you cannot imagine you get when you're around people so if you're somebody who likes to work with people corporate is the place for you but if you're somebody who does not like to work with people or rather even for somebody then you may not enjoy corporate i understood so you have to learn to work with people around you and, and work with them as well and under a person under a person also yeah understood uh, so what would be your advice to someone who plans to take the route you have taken that is get into either pharmacovigilance or non clinical field after bds okay. so i think it it firstly it all depends on what the person is looking for from their work life so if you're somebody who uh, loves to have weekends for themselves just want to work monday to friday have a fixed set of salary which increases with every year you get appraisals and all of those you have salary benefits and you have all those other employee benefits that come in the corporate culture so if you're somebody who wants all of those things corporate is the place for you now uh, coming to pharmacovigilance if you're a fresher i would suggest if you're somebody who does not want to get into clinical the sooner you start the better it is because uh, you will start your growth will start sooner your salary starts to grow sooner so if they start late what happens is the entire steps they take takes longer so they start earlier it yes. is better for them understood yes. that's very good advice because we see a lot of young dentists what they do they take a lot of time maybe 3 years 4 years and it is no fault of theirs because they have done dentistry and then they are confused whether they should make the jump to non clinical so this is very good advice dr neha has given that if you think 
dentistry or clinical dentistry is not for you and you want to get into the non-clinical aspect, it is better that you understand this quicker and make the jump faster. Thank you for that lovely advice, Dr. Neha. Uh, I just want to add something to that. So for people who actually join in after three, four years because they want to make a switch, uh, they should not lose hope because there are certain jobs that specifically require people who have three, four years of clinical expertise as well. That's great. And then, yeah. So, but you just need to look for such jobs. Understood. So what kind of roles is any specific kind of roles or they mention it in the job profile? So uh, the thing is every company, sometimes they have a different name to similar kind of roles. Like there may be a medical advisor, what a medical advisor does in a, in a single company. Some, in some other company, it, it may be named as something else. The designation is named differently in different companies. So, like I said, you can go to these portals, the job portals of these companies, and check for each of these roles. What are the requirements? And that's how you'll find these. Uh, it was a lovely conversation with you, Dr. Neha. Thank you for giving your time and explaining the basics of your journey. I'm sure this will help a lot of young dentists out there. Thank you. Happy to help.